We're up to part six of our conversation with Greg Godovitz. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Canada. Greg has done so much for Canadian music, and he knows so many international artists. It's amazing the stories he tells. He wrote these two books. We'll have links in the description where you can pick them up. It's amazing his history in music, being an early member of the band Flood. Then, of course, his solo stuff and Gatto. Here's our conversation with Greg Godovitz. Graham Goble of LRB, Little River Band. And he oh, told nice. me, Glenn Shorick, the lead singer. Yeah. And Glenn kind of told me the same thing two years ago. He said, it's nobody's fault. He says, we just didn't, we just, it just didn't work. But in a band, it worked. But personally, it didn't work. So well, with Gatto, it was only on stage where it worked. I mean, yeah. and in the studio to a degree. Uh, we were three completely different personalities. You know, I was the outgoing creative guy. Somebody else was into doing this. The other guy was into doing that. Uh, by the end of it, I mean, you know, I was traveling on my own, staying in a different hotel. And, you know, it was like that. But on stage, for the and most having part. having tough guys go to your uh, hotel room and asking you why you're staying, even though your leg was hurting. Yeah, well, that there was all sorts of that kind of stuff going on with, you know, getting threats from certain factions. I didn't care. I mean, you know, like Brian said, Ghana was my band, you know, so I was I was in the driver's seat with regards to who got what and, and where it went. Um, and there was a lot of great times. I mean, but looking back, like, would I do it with those guys again? No, no, I wouldn't. I just there's, there's too much muddy water under the bridge with that band you know i'm proud of our legacy i mean we made some tremendous records we didn't get the international approval that would have been nice financially but i've always said that had i made that leap into international fame we wouldn't be having this conversation i would have been long dead you know in the 70s, when you were starting this, what was the machine like? Were you starting Gatto? Like the, the industry machine, you're starting this band. You get it, but in, in two years, you got your first album after a few singles. What, what, did it, what, was it, what was the hardships for you in that? Or were you just so happy to be free? What did it feel like for you? Oh, we, I, we went into the rehearsal studio. It was Marty Morin playing drums with us then killer musician. We went to high school together. In fact, he ended the Gatto career with me back playing drums again. And he looked so much like Doug that when Doug joined the band, he was signing Marty's picture until we ran out of them. <laughs> and then at the end of it, Marty comes back and people were giving him Doug's picture and he's signing it because nobody could tell the difference between the two of them, even though they weren't related. We, we were in the rehearsal place. I think we came up with 14 songs and then we went out and played. So we had to do 40, four 40 minute sets a night with 14 songs. So by the time we got to the second set, we were already repeating the songs from the first set and, and so on and so forth until some of the songs were being played three or four times a night. But we, in those days, we were like cream. We could extend the instrumental passages before these songs were recorded. So we could do a 10 minute version of Under My Hat with like this big Santana kind of guitar thing happening in it. Uh, I remember our first gig, uh, we played the bouncer comes up. My name is Lucky. I'm the bouncer here. You will do everything I tell you to do. <laughs> first of all, no drum solos. Secondly, you play four sets a night, you get 15 minutes off. And remember, no drum solos. We go on stage. I looked at Marty. I said, you know what to do, right? He plays a 10-minute drum solo right off the hot. I, and then he stops. And I said, well, now that we've established who's really in charge here, <laughs> I'm surprised the guy didn't kill me, but he didn't. <laughs> so we, we had that attitude. I mean, it was us against the world. And then a month after we were together, we get the call. We're going to open up at Massey Hall for Golden Earring. And we just went out there with the guns blazing. And we tore that plate. They didn't know who we were. Some people knew I played with Flood. Some people recognized Gino from Brutus. Some people might have known Marty from Truck or whatever band he was playing in. But we tore the place up. And the next day, the newspapers and, and uh, Larry Wilson on Chum FM had the rock report. All they talked about was us. They said, there's this new band. So at that point, we couldn't get a gig at the Gasworks. That was, that's the one you wanted. Forget Massey Hall. You wanted to play the Gasworks. 
all of a sudden we've got a week at the gas works now and it's lined up every night. So we, we made our mark really fast in Toronto. And then the songs, Marty was a great songwriter. So the songs were just coming fast and furious. And then unfortunately Marty quit uh, the band and then Doug came in. So I lost that extra singer and I lost a foil to bounce song ideas off of because he would, I remember on the rock report, they, they pointed out the three songs of his that he wrote that we played at Massey Hall. And there was a little inkling of jealousy. I have to admit, I went, well, hang on a second. What about those other ones I wrote? But they talked about it. But I love the fact that we got the attention, you know? How do you look back when you look back and you were reading your journals? How did you look at your, did you recognize the guy? I mean, we change. Oh, no, I recognized the guy. I mean, I, I could see the good there, but I also saw the monster there. And I mean, I think I'm the only author in history that calls himself an idiot 175 times in my first book. Or actually, I used the ASS. And uh, that was I said, you know, I was such a, you know, uh, and the self deprecating part of my character, I think, was the saving grace because I realized that, you know, I could be difficult, <laughs> you know, never to the fans. I, I went out of my way, you know, if I let, if I walked out of the hall to have a smoke and I saw two kids that couldn't afford tickets, I got them in, you know, or I bought them tickets or whatever, always deferred to them. They were paying our bills, but, you know, certain people in the industry who I didn't have the same respect for, they heard about it. You know I mean? I just, I just couldn't stop myself from shooting myself in the foot, you know? We'll have more from Greg Godovitz in the next three, four days. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos and buy a Rock History Canada t-shirt. Help support our channel. I'm John Bowden. Take care of yourself.